In this short video, we're going to look at some important formulas. One is the distance between two points. It's called a distance formula. And the other gives us the coordinates of the point halfway between two points. That's the midpoint. So let's do a quick review about the coordinate plane. We have an x and y axis. and Given the uh, x and y axis, we can always identify any point based on its coordinates. The x coordinate first and the y coordinate second. The x and y axis divide up the coordinate plane into four regions. We call them quadrants. And they get numbered 1 to 4 going in a counterclockwise direction. So quadrant 1 is where both the x and the y coordinates are positive. In quadrant 2, the x coordinate is negative, but the y coordinate is positive. Going to coordinate quadrant 3, both the x and y coordinates are negative. And then in quadrant 4, the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is negative. The point where the axes meet, it has coordinates 0, 0. We call that the origin. So another bit of review that we need for the distance formula is the Pythagorean theorem. It applies to right triangles. So those are triangles with a right angle. Remember, a right angle measures 90 degrees. The longest side we call the hypotenuse. The other two sides don't have a special name. We refer to them as legs. And normally we call the legs A and B and the hypotenuse C. And we have a formula that relates the length of the hypotenuse to the lengths of the legs. And that's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The sum of the square of the legs is the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Or we could solve that for c, and because we know it's going to be positive, so we only use the positive square root. So c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, suppose that I have two points. I have point p. It has coordinates negative 2, comma 1. Point q has points has coordinates 1, comma, negative 3. I'd like to know the distance between them. Well, I can start by drawing a right triangle where the hypotenuse of that right triangle is the distance from P to Q, or connects P and Q. And so that would be, in our Pythagorean theorem, uh, C. And then the other two distances are what we'd call the legs. Now, if we look at this, the A leg, the horizontal line segment here, has length which is equal to the distance or the change in the x-coordinates. How did the x-coordinates change going from point P to point Q? And change, we use the symbol delta, so delta x. And the x-coordinate of q is 1. The x-coordinate of p is negative 2. So to go from negative 2 to 1, we've gone 3 units. And then we'd like to be consistent for the change in y. That would be the vertical change. And so even though I'm going to wind up with a negative number, I'm going to take negative 3 and subtract 1. It won't matter because in our Pythagorean theorem, we're going to square these values. And so when I square 3, I get 9. And when I square negative 4, I get 16. And add 9 plus 16, I get 25. And radical 25 is just 5. So the 
distance from P to Q, or the length of the line segment PQ, is 5 units. So now suppose that instead of given fixed numbers, I just have two generic points, P and Q. So I'm going to use subscripts to help me identify the first point and the second point. So x sub 1 will be the x coordinate of the first point. y sub 1 is the y coordinate of the first point. And then x sub 2 is the x coordinate of the first point, while y sub 2 is the y coordinate of the second point. And so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now this time my delta x, which would be the horizontal change, would be the difference in the x coordinates, the delta y is the difference in the y coordinates, and I can put that into the Pythagorean theorem, and I get a formula for the distance between any two general points. So the distance d between two points, x1 comma y1, x2 comma y2, is, we take the difference in the x coordinates, square it, the difference of the y coordinates, square it, add those two together, and then take the square root. So let's just do an example here. We're, we have two points, negative 2 comma 7 and negative 3 comma 3. We'd like to know the distance between them. So I always start by labeling my x1, y1, x2, y2 and make the substitution into the formula. So I'll have a negative 3 minus a negative 2. So I need to be a little careful with the negative signs. And then for the y coordinates, negative 3 minus 7. So that would be for the x coordinates, negative 3 plus 2. Y coordinates, I'll, having, I'll have negative 10. And then I'll need to square both of those. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 10 squared is 100. So I'll get radical 1 plus 100, or square root 101. So let's look at a slightly different example. Here we're told the distance from P to Q is 13. And we know everything about P. P has x coordinate 2 and y coordinate 5. We know something about point Q. It's on the positive x axis. What we'd like to know is what are the coordinates of the point Q? Well, since it's on the x axis, we know the y coordinate has to be 0. So the only thing that's missing is the x-coordinate. So we'll just call that x. We have point P is 2, 5. We know x is a positive number because it's, Q is on the positive x-axis. And we know the d value, the dis distance is told to us, is 13. So now I can make my substitutions. Let me start by labeling my x1, y1, x2, y2, substitute into my formula, and now I've got to solve this equation for x. So I'm going to start by squaring both sides. Uh, one thing that I'm not going to do is inside the square root sign, I'm not going to s multiply out the x minus 2 squared. And you'll see why. I could have gone ahead and subtracted 0 minus 5 and then squared that before squaring both sides, uh, but in the end it's going to give me the same result. So let me square both sides because if I have the radical and then I square it, those two operations undo each other. Uh, and then on the left hand side I'll have to take 13 times 13, which gives me 169. Now I don't have a radical, I still have 
quantity x minus 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. So negative 5 squared is 25. Let me go ahead and subtract that from each side. And now I have the binomial x minus 2 all squared equals 144. And I didn't multiply this out because now I can use the square roots property. And that will tell me that x minus 2 will be plus or minus square root of 144. Now 144 is exactly 12 squared. So that tells me that x minus 2 is plus or minus 12. So I'll either have x equals 2 plus 12 or x equals 2 minus 12. If I use 2 minus 12, I'll get x equals negative 10. And that would not give me a result on the positive x-axis. So I will not use x equals negative 10. Ah, but the other value is positive, so x equals 14. So the coordinates of point Q are 14, 0. Now for the midpoint formula, let's think about just a very simple case, and, and we're talking about numbers on the number line. If I look at for the number that's in the middle, halfway between 2 and 8, well that number, I can just look at it and say that's going to be 5. That actually winds up being 3 units from 2 and 3 units from 8. But a shortcut to get there, it would be the average of 2 and 8. If I take 2 plus 8, I'll get 10. And divide that by 2, divided by 2 is 5. So that's, I think, as a shortcut. I mean, we could take 8 minus 2 to get doing that would be to say, well, 8 minus 2 equals 6. Half of 6 equals 3. And so then 2 plus 3 equals 5. So we're thinking of, oh, what's the distance between them? Take half of that and then add that on. That uh, is longer. And in particular, when we're talking about points in the plane, that would be very complicated. So we would rather not do that. We would rather just work with the average of the two points. So if I have x1 and x2, so just some generic points, I would take x1 plus x2 and divide it by 2. So now that's going to be very useful when I'm dealing with points in the plane. So the midpoint between P and Q would be the point which is halfway from P to Q. It's kind of the average point. And so what we'll do is we'll just take the, to get the x coordinate, we'll take the average of the given x-coordinates of p and q. And to get the y-coordinate, we'll take the average of the y-coordinates. If you think about it in terms of similar triangles, we know that if qm, the length from q to m, or the distance from q to m, is half the distance from p to q, then that tells me that the vertical distance here has got to be 
half the vertical distance of uh, the change in the y-coordinates, which would wind up being the average of the y-coordinates. And the same idea for the x-coordinates. All right, so let's look at some examples. We have a triangle, and we know all of the coordinates of the vertices of the triangle. We'd like to find the midpoint of the line segment A, B. So we're not going to use C at all in this example. So I seem to have my labels off. So let me get those. Move this over. There we go. So my x1 is negative 2, my x2 is 6, my y1 is 3, my y2 is negative 3, and I'm just going to use our formula here. And so uh, I'll take negative 2 plus 6. Let me fix this again, not sure how that happened. So I'm going to take negative 2 plus 6 divided by 2, 3 plus negative 3, and divide that by 2. And so negative 6 plus 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 3 plus, I mean, 3 plus negative 3 will give me 0. And 0 divided by 2 is 0. All right. Let's look at the next example. Again, we ha we're going to deal with the same triangle. Now we're going to try to find the length of this line segment AB. So we're going back to the distance formula. When we're trying to find distance or length, we're using the uh, distance formula. If we're trying to find the coordinates of a midpoint, we'll use the midpoint formula. So same values for x1, y1, x2, y2. And go ahead and put that in there. Now we're looking at the difference. So we're looking at the change in the x-coordinates and the change in the y-coordinates. We'll square those, add those up, and then take the square root. So minus a negative 2 will be the same as plus 2. Negative 3 minus 3, that will be negative 6. So I'll get... 8 squared, which will be 64. Negative 6 squared is 36. Add those together and I get 100. And radical 100, or square root of 100, is 10. Alright, so now I'm going to be using the midpoint that I found in example 3. The midpoint of line segment AB. We're going to find the distance from M to point C. So from example 3, we found the coordinates to be 2 comma 0 for the point M. And so now my x1 is 2, y1 is 0, x2 is 14, y2 is 5. So I'll plug those into the distance formula and work that out. I'll get the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared, which will wind up being the square root of 169 which is 13.